The efficiency of electronics seems to be a priority in the age where people value clean energy over fossil fuel. So what point do AMD slash Intel slash Nvidia make their products draw so much power that flagship customers will go out of their way uh, to be out of their way for a more efficient, lower heat output product instead of buying purely for performance. So I think this question is sort of saying like when people are buying Tesla vehicles and stuff and people are now concerned about, you know, their footprint and all that, uh, you know, why are we seeing these high-end products be go into these sort of, I suppose, the opposite of the eco mode that is talked about beyond the point of diminishing returns just for a few extra frames um, is how I yeah, sort of like understood that why they're doing that and then like at what point is it does it get so ridiculous that people sort of go no i don't want that anymore and right. then buy like a less out of the efficiency window type part yeah well this is in my opinion this has all come about at least in recent times as there's been sort of some stagnation but also amd really has become more competitive when it comes to cpus and gpus and these brands have realized that halo products sell products that are further down the uh, food chain, let's say, and also help with mind share and stuff like that. So NVIDIA is really in a position now where they're like, we are the, the premier brand. We are the most dominant force in this market. We have the fastest, best products. And to prove that here is the fastest, best product. And so they want to maintain that. And then Intel is very much the same position, or at least has been aiming to be. Uh, and they're certainly back to that at the moment where they offer the fastest, best processes. But in order to achieve that against a really competitive competitor, they're now needing to overclock and do what essentially PC enthusiasts have been doing for decades to get that last bit out to actually make that a valid claim. And then as AMD does that, then they do it. And we get to this point where it just becomes this arms race where they're just overclocking to the moon. And that's why we're seeing that, you know, winding Zen 4 back 5%, has a significant reduction to thermals and power. And um, they're doing that, yeah, as I said, because it's what, it's, it's what creates that mind share and, and has a knock-on effect and sells the, the, the skews lower down the product stack. And also, people seem to always complain about this, but it's had absolutely zero impact on sales. Mm. Like people, uh, for some reason, it, it's always a talking point. Right? Like they power consumption of parts, thermals, people be like, oh, this is really crazy. And then they just ignore all of that and buy it anyway. Which is why... It, Which is why there's no... Why they keep doing it. Well, it's why AMD is obviously cottoned on and they do that. Like, I, I have criticised them for not promoting eco mode more, which I think, first of all, they should have had that ready and I think they should have promoted it more. But in their defence, they've seen, you know, Intel go to the moon with power and thermals and all that stuff and, you know. Yeah. So... I think part of it as well is that they can't get... They're not able to, with current technology, get the flagship best performing product without doing it. Yes. Because if, if AMD was, let's say Zen 4 wasn't on TSMC 5 nanometer, but it was on 2 nanometer or something, then I'm c confident that they'd be able to outperform Intel and Intel's upcoming generation, which is what they had to plan for, without going crazy on power. Mm -hmm. Because it would have been another no gap and they probably would have been able to do it with you know, a fraction of the power that they're able to now. But the issue is that they can't. They, If they want that best performing part, they have to do what they're doing to mm -hmm. get that level. Whereas in previous years when there's been, you know, Intel's kind of been the dominant player, they, they didn't need to go as crazy on power because they were already winning. Mm -hmm. So there was no incentive for them if they were winning at 90 watts to create a 200 watt CPU mm -hmm. just to win by a little bit more. They're already winning. They, they had the win. That's it. You can go home. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think we're not going to see the route going backwards in terms of efficiency unless that happens again. Mm -hmm. So unless AMD comes out with some architecture or Intel comes out with some architecture where they can beat their competitor while consuming less power, th then they're not just not going yeah, to right. go for something like that. And, and, and I, think, I think to answer the other part of the question, you know, consumers just don't care. Like they don't care that the, the CPU uses two forty watts. Apart By from and large, yeah. apart from complaining about on forums, you know, yeah, people still buy. Well, that's right. And AMD has made it very clear that they don't want to be a second rate competitor. They want maximum margins. Yeah. And by going beyond the point of diminishing returns for those few extra frames to at least, you know, be competitive or 
on par with flagship Intel products, it, it would cost them money to not do that. Like and it doesn't it doesn't cost them money to do that. They can put their their CPUs in that premium category and get those big margins. Whereas if they if eco mode was the peak, then they're a bit slower than Intel, therefore they can't charge quite as much. And you know, that's yeah. like ten percent slower for fifty percent less power doesn't sell. No. Whereas 10% more performance for 50% more power definitely sells. Yeah, which they've definitely worked out now. Yeah, and definitely. It, you know, NVIDIA are doing the same thing. They're aware of that. So, yep. yeah, it's kind of why overclocking has been dead for a while, but there are other ways and other things to do now, as we've seen with Zen yep. 4 and other products. So anyway, I think we've answered that one. Okay, I think we've been going on long enough there for part one. So we'll hit pause. Lots of great questions. Pretty much a lot of the topics we thought we'd be talking about, but that's good. Hey, it's good to have a lot of new and interesting, exciting things to talk about. I certainly enjoyed it. What about you, Tim? Yeah, this month, awesome set of questions. I remember going through, checking out the questions I wanted to add. I'm just slamming in like question after question. So many yeah. good ones. So really appreciate all you guys that submitted questions either via the YouTube thing or via Discord for our community mm -hmm. members. Mm -hmm. Speaking of community members, you can sign up and become a member to ask us questions to be part of our live streams chat with us on discord bts videos what else discord that's bts the, yeah, yeah. live streams and i suppose q a stuff eh? yeah that's pretty much it as well we're subscribing yep so got patreon float play links in the description below for that stuff mm -hmm. and yeah that's pretty much it for this one there'll be a part two and probably a part three up on the channel in the next coming days so stay tuned for those and subscribe like the video do all that good stuff and yeah I'm your host, Tim. I'm your host, Dave. See you next time.